Good evening and thanks for joining us. The NNPC had had it in its plans to enhance medical infrastructure support and help with national healthcare delivery system revamp for quite some time prior to COVID-19's coming. Remember that the corporation had thrown its health facilities open to the Nigerian public some time ago. And so it's up the alley of the National Oil Company to give expeditious response early enough in the national action and also galvanize the oil and gas industry-wide response. Also engaging prime attention is crude oil. The NNPC is looking to adopt strategies to cut production costs. Talking about the upstream sector efficiency, we have all the details coming up. I'm Akin Agbujile. This is Oil and Gas Forum. It's pertinent to categorically reiterate that all commitments of the coalition, which is all in kind, will be met and guided by a governance structure that is in line with the principles of transparency, accountability, performance and excellence, TAP, of the GMD and Global Flex Practices. Let's take responsibility to stop the spread of the virus. Wash your hands frequently with soap under running water for about 20 seconds or use a hand sanitizer where water and soap are not available. Cough or sneeze into a tissue and dispose properly or cough or sneeze into your elbow. Avoid large gatherings. Keep physical contact to no less than 2 meters and wear a mask whenever you are in a public space. Clean all surfaces frequently with disinfectants. Stay in your state. If you've traveled across states or just returned from a trip abroad, self-isolate for 14 days. And if you develop symptoms like frequent cough, sneezing, fever, or shortage of breath, call your state emergency number or NCDC's toll-free number on 0800 97 00 0010. Take responsibility. Do it for yourself and the rest of us. This message is brought to you by the NCDC. CDC and funded by the NNPC IPPG team, an association of indigenous oil and gas producing companies. After years of behind the scene preparations and extensive planning, the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation is set to commence outfield construction of the Abuja to Kano to Kaduna AKK gas pipeline project from the third week of June 2020 with a projected completion date of year end 2022. Speaking in a virtual interactive session with some senior journalists, Mala Melekiari, Group Managing Director of the NNPC, explained that upon completion, the 48 inch AKK gas pipeline project would ultimately enable the delivery of 2.4 billion standard cubic feet of gas into the national grid. To kickstart probably by June, uh, third week of June max, and to, to progress with that project. And of course, the first drawdown from the loan itself is expected probably around end of September or maximum in October. And within that period, uh, we have significant resources to ensure that this project continues. And Malam Kiari explained that the corporation was working assiduously to conclude the ongoing expansion of the Escravos to Lagos gas pipeline network, also known as ELPS, and the Oben to Obiafu to Obricom OB3 gas pipeline project by successfully crossing the river Niger at Oben. The NNPC GMD also provided updates on Nigeria's compliance with agreed OPEC production cuts. We are down to the opest court level, but when you take the average for the month, we are still far away from uh, from the 1.42, and we will surely achieve that in, uh, uh, in in June. China's crude oil imports came in below 10 million barrels per day again in April, but there was an uptick versus March as refinery runs continued to recover from the lows seen in February at the height of the country's coronavirus lockdowns. According to Energy Intelligence, China landed 9.88 million per day of crude oil in April, 
an increase of around 160,000 per day over March, with Russia accounting for more than half of that gain as it displaced Saudi Arabia as the country's top overseas supplier. Back in February, Chinese refiners made deep cuts in their crude runs and stashed oil in storage tanks. But with refineries ramping up utilization again, much of that oil is now being withdrawn from storage and imports are picking up again. China's imports of crude from Saudi Arabia, Iraq and Kuwait fell in April by a combined 874,000 per day versus March. But other Mideast producers, including the United Arab Emirates and Oman, were up a combined 764,000 barrels per day versus March. Meanwhile, crude oil exports from Russian seaports should hold steady at lower levels in June after a sharp drop in May when Russian producers reined in their outputs to comply with organization of the petroleum exporting countries OPEC plus production cuts. Seaborne crude oil exports from outlets on the Baltic Sea, the Black Sea and the Sea of Okulst have been penciled in at 2.057 million barrels per day equivalent of 8.42 million metric tons for June, according to preliminary port loading programs issued by Russian oil pipeline monopoly Transneft. When the coronavirus, otherwise known as COVID-19, was first reported in China in late December 2019, no one envisaged the magnitude and speed at which the virus would spread across the globe. Nigeria recorded its index case of the coronavirus on February 27, 2020 in Lagos. At that time, it had become a global pandemic. In March 2020, President Mohamed Buhari signed the COVID-19 quarantine regulations to enforce measures to check the spread of the disease in the country. Commending the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation NNPC, its industry partners and the organized private sector for their support, President Mohamed Buhari in a national broadcast described their interventions as timely, which he said had helped the nation in combating the pandemic while expressing optimism on the timely flattening of the curve. But these are sacrifices we should all be willing and ready to make for the greater good of our country. Apart from regulations, it was necessary to adopt a coordinated approach to combat the pandemic and in recognition of that and the impact of the disease on the Nigerian population and the economy, the Group Managing Director of the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, Mala Milikari, commenced an oil and gas industry-wide collaborative intervention initiative to combat and mitigate the pandemic and its attendant impact on the economy. NNPC and her partners, which included the Oil Producers Trade Section, OPTS, of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, LCCI and the Independent Oil Producers Group, IPPG, made up of international oil companies, IOCs, and other upstream companies in Nigeria, came together for the laudable initiative. Speaking on the intervention in Abuja on March 27, 2020, the Group Managing Director of the NNPC announced an initial $30 million, equivalent to 11 billion naira, for the three thematic areas which included provision of medical consumables, deployment of logistics and inpatient support system and delivery of medical infrastructure. What we have done as an industry is to make a collective contribution spread across businesses in the upstream and downstream sector. No sooner than action on the support began than NNPC, her leadership and coordinating role on its own, provided medical consumables covering test kits, medical protective suits, and ambulances to the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital. At the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital, Malam Kiari affirmed the commitment of the NNPC and its partners 
to supporting the federal government not only in combating the COVID-19 pandemic, but to revamp the nation's healthcare delivery system and prepare against any future occurrence of the disease. It is our duty and responsibility to be of service to this country and the citizens. So we are not helping you, we are doing our job. Receiving the items, the Chief Medical Director of the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital, Professor Bisala Ahmed Ekele, said the NNPC medical interventions would go a long way in saving the lives of many Nigerians. This is likely to be the most significant and prompt response that we have received since we have been crying for help. Since the beginning of the initiative, the collaborative efforts of the oil and gas industry has risen to 21 billion naira as seen in the provision of medical consumables, massive distribution of medical facilities to all the 36 states and the federal capital territory, and with the plan to establish state-of-the-art healthcare centers in at least 14 states of the federation. At the inauguration of a 300-bed, one-stop shop medical isolation center at the Disday Dome in Abuja, which was refurbished and equipped by the Sahara Group, Central Bank of Nigeria, 54 Jean and others, including a Chinese company, China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, and Chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, Mr. Boss Mustafa, said the facility had boosted the nation's capacity in the fight against COVID-19. We are witnessing the realization of the synergy with the commissioning of this facility. The speed and commitment demonstrated by the partners that developed this infrastructure is a call to other private sector entities to also get involved in the development of public interest facilities. The support of the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Chief Timmy Pre Silva, has been critical to the success of the medical interventions. The NMPC and its partners under this initiative will continue to contribute consignments of medical consumables, equipment and logistic facilities across all the states in the country. Aside from the provision of medical equipment, construction has commenced at some of the proposed medical centers with the foundation laying ceremony of the Infectious Diseases Hospital in Yenagoa, Bayelsa State. This groundbreaking ceremony by the oil industry to combat COVID-19 with such a gigantic and huge medical infrastructure for the South-South region and located in our state. We can only say thank you. The response by the oil and gas industry at a very critical period in the nation attracted an outpouring of commendations from well-meaning Nigerians. Speaking on behalf of the Southwest Governors, Babajide Sanwolu said the donation will be used to support the critical infrastructure that was a challenge to the healthcare system. We believe that with all of us working collaboratively together, private sector, public sector, Understanding that we're on the same side, we just that we have to tackle and solve this once and for all. For the governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Ganduje, the NNPC and its partners' intervention came when the state needed it most. The NNPC and its partners we are coming to our aid with the logistics and from even permanent infrastructure. Recently, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mala Musa Bello, joined other stakeholders and government officials in commending the leadership role of the NNPC in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. We also acknowledge the very good efforts NNPC has been doing as a catalyst for development in Abuja, particularly many of the investment projects. And we felt that if an institution like NNPC is willing to set up a medical facility, we should give them maximum support. On his part, the Minister of State for Health, Dr. Adeleke Mamora, commended the initiative of the oil and gas sector in the fight against COVID-19. This initiative of the oil and gas industry is highly commendable. 
IPPG chairman Mr. Ademola Adeyemi Beru said the group, made up of indigenous oil firms, was working towards procuring 5 million face masks, 100,000 test kits, 12 ambulances, ventilators, beddings and overalls for health workers. And today we are we're very pleased to be invited to commence the handing over of the support we are giving to Nigeria, the government, under the leadership of NMPC. Mr. Bala Wunti, Group General Manager, National Petroleum Investment Management Services, NAPIMS, who is the coordinator of the upstream segment of the exercise, said the oil and gas industry was committed to delivering on its promise of improving medical infrastructure in the country. For us in the oil and gas industry, the health of the community will operate determine our health of our workers and determine the health of the industry. Throwing their support to the NNPC and its partners initiative, OCSA, a France-based company through the NNPC, donated 20 units of ventilators to the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 to bolster the fight against the pandemic in Nigeria. Kunle Aluko, who made a donation on behalf of Maestro's Defense Systems Limited, praised the PTF for her unwavering efforts to combat the pandemic. Part of our corporate social responsibility, we decided with OSEA to deliver this 20 of these modern ventilators to NNPC, knowing that it will get to the right hands. By the last count, the NNPC-led oil and gas industry-wide collaborative efforts have donated an ambulance and a ventilator to each of the 36 states of the Federation and more to the Federal Capital Territory. The initiative is also moving to establish 14 modern healthcare centers in 14 states of the Federation and this laudable gesture will cut across the six geopolitical zones of the country. This unprecedented initiative has been applauded by Nigerians who described the NNPC and her partners as living up to the expectations of the people. For consistently charting humanitarian causes and interventions in time of need, the oil and gas resources is a blessing and not a curse, after all, and the petroleum sector must be applauded by all men of goodwill for standing up to be counted even at these very challenging times in human history. Hello, nice to have you join us on the feedback segment. My name is Julia Outer. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, means different things to different people. Our curious camera roamed the streets to find out from the public if NNPC is mentioned, what comes to your mind. They supply oil and gas to the end users and all that. And they make sure that oil and gas is all over the country. As you know, NNPC is the backbone of Nigerian finances and uh, I think Nigeria solemnly depends on oil and gas for our revenues. They are the people responsible for most of our uh, resources in terms of petroleum resources and not even most of our natural resources, the hand resources. They are the, the, the controller of our oil, oil resources, both the exploration to the marketing and uh, petroleum resources. I know that NNPC, they deal with oil, gas, refineries and then um, I believe they, they are also in charge of um, scholarship. It's a federal government corporation, wholly owned by the federal government, uh, with the mandate to explore for crude and crude related, crude related uh, products, sell, negotiate, sell, and return the proceeds to the coffers of the federal government of Nigeria. Interesting and insightful responses, you would say. The NNPC's responsibilities include crude oil exploration and production, gas development, refining, petrochemicals, engineering, commercial investment, as well as petroleum products, marketing and distribution to end users. And that's it on this segment. Please stay tuned for more on the program. Hello, thanks 
for joining us on this segment. My name is Faith Ayuba. Did you know that pipeline vandalism is the illegal act of puncturing or destroying crude oil and petroleum products pipeline to steal the products? Did you know that in Nigeria, the Petroleum Production and Distribution Anti-Sabotage Act of 1975 governs the petroleum vandalism law? Did you know that the Anti-Sabotage Act states that any person who willfully does, aids, incites, counsel another with intent to obstruct or prevent the production procurement and distribution of petroleum products in any part of Nigeria will be guilty of the offense of sabotage? A person found guilty of petroleum product pipeline vandalism is liable to a death sentence or a term of imprisonment of up to 21 years. Did you also know that the effect of pipeline vandalism range from environmental pollution and ecosystem damage, fire outbreak, economic loss, plant and refinery stoppage, fuel scarcity, electrical power outage and population displacement and loss of lives? Now you know. Don't go away. Crude Oil Outlook is next. Hello and welcome to Global Crude Oil Outlook. Oil prices fell after United States industry data showed a surprise steep build in crude oil inventories, dampening hopes of a smooth recovery in demand as some countries ease coronavirus lockdowns. Brent crude futures were down 1.12% or 39 cents at $34.35 per barrel after dropping to as low as $33.62 in earlier trade. United States West Texas Intermediate WTI crude futures were down 1.52% or 50 cents at $32.31 per barrel. The United States futures slipped earlier as much as 5% to a low of $31.14. The decline in oil benchmarks extended losses during the week over uncertainty about Russia's commitment to deep output cuts ahead of a June 9 meeting of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries and its allies, a grouping dubbed OPEC+. Plus. Analysts believe that the early June OPEC Plus meeting would help stabilize supply and demand fundamentals which would prop up crude oil prices. Russian President Vladimir Putin and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman agreed during a telephone call on further close coordination on oil output restrictions, the Kremlin said. With WTI holding above $30 per barrel, OPEC Plus will be closely watching to see whether United States shale oil producers who have break-even prices in the high $20 and low $30 range step up production, National Australia Bank's head of commodity research, Lachlan Shaw, said. And that's it on this segment of the program. I am Wigo Kolo. That's been Oil and Gas Forum. And this edition, quite a delightsome and informative one. Remember to always do the needful and keep safe to be safe and stay safe. Bye.